Kia ora. Kia ora. Welcome back to Video Drones. I'm Hannah Hart. And I'm Nick Hart. And we review movies. We are obsessed with movies and we love them very, very much. If you haven't been here before, that's what we do. But if you have seen us before, well, welcome back. Nice to see you again. Big thanks to Matthew Sunderland. Sunderland? Is that right? Matthew Sunderland so. for saying such lovely things about our reviews. And mm. we really appreciate those comments that made that day. And it's really nice to know that we have some regular viewers out there. That's a bit special. So we figured you would like this one because we're finally reviewing Bones and All by Luca Guadagnino, mm. who Nick is a massive, massive, huge fan of. And yeah. despite only seeing a couple of his films, I am also a pretty huge fan. This guy's amazing. Like he really, mm. he does something quite different from other directors. I can't ex really put my finger on it. He just takes more time, I think. Well, not, mm. not more time, more th thought kind of goes into mm. the shot and mm. um, music and even things details like the literature that he lies scattered around you know his films yeah i really I appreciate really that that was neat that's how you found out about ocean vong yeah it is i'm a huge fan now so. uh, ocean vong is this amazing vietnamese poet that his work is just exquisite so mm. big thanks to luca for <laughs> letting us find out about him um one of the characters was reading i saw character clan, clan of the cave bears and um, her name is, it's her name's Marin with M-A-R-E-N, but it sounds like Marin out of um, the mm. uh, Exorcist. Marin. It does. So she's said like Marin, and she's she's got a copy of Clan of the Cave here in one of the scenes. And I thought that was a really appropriate reading for a teenager in the 80s. I've actually read most of those books because I find them, even though they're kind of a bit like sappy and romantic, which I don't like, they have so many interesting historical details, mm. which have a lot of like, a lot of research behind it. I think that was also due to, you know, what was in the book that it was based on. So he probably mm -hmm. didn't have as much room for... Well, I mean, Sully has some sort of westerns and stuff in his backpack. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, but also just mentioning The Exorcist, um, I just read that Luca Guadagnino is a huge, huge Exorcist fan, ah. which gives you a sort of a clue to how he approaches his films because he said he loves it because it's more of a drama mm. and then it's a mm -hmm. horror you know it's mainly a drama and his his yeah. films are as well even though you know Suspiria and Bones and All are sort of horrors but there there are a lot of genres really they are I, I really gotta say at this point though I really really don't appreciate people comparing Bones and All to Twilight <laughs> yeah. I haven't watched Twilight but the little snippets that I've sort of had to see along the years make me not see any connection at all this is about two two loners that are actually hanging out together but it's about people who are really far out on the fringes of society they are loners they don't have any magical powers or anything like that and it just doesn't look or feel They're like anything like that kind of sappy style romance of filmmaking, <laughs> really <laughs> Luther's films in my opinion are a lot more warm and can mm. be appreciated by anyone of any age um but Twilight is sort of... That's um, just a teen phenomenon, surely. Yeah. I find those films quite cold, sort of aesthetically as well. Mm. Just the way they, they... The look of the films and stuff like that. I, I mean, but, like, I think it would have to be a pretty mature 16-year-old for this film. I think maybe 18 plus. Mm. It's not really... It's not exactly made for, like, teenagers, especially no. not under 16-year-olds. You definitely... I think this would be a bit much for them. And also, it's quite slow-paced. So, unless you happen to find a teenager that has, like, an amazing attention span in this universe of um, TikToks and things like that, yeah, I don't know, that would appeal. It'll definitely appeal to people who grew up in the 80s as well. Yeah. Yes, it's quite inconspicuously 80s, though. It's not like... What did Lucas say? He says He's a obsessed things. with little details mm. being absolutely accurate mm. um you know like that, that film that tv series we are who we are he mm. they actually built an entire army base yeah. um so and <laughs> from scratch and made everything look exactly like it was you know supposed to be from when it was set and mm. that yeah that same thing happened with bones and all there's a scene very short scene in a supermarket but they they just like hired that warehouse space and turned it into a supermarket um, I love isn't that cool? And he would have made all the products that were on the shelves, yeah, yeah. you know, you know, period appropriate. But at the same time, you don't have people dressed in really outlandish '80s garb like you would normally see in, in um, modern yeah. things that reference the '80s. Exactly, because they, I, like, I remember him in an interview saying that they wanted to make the film set 
during the epoch, not about the epoch, which is mm -hmm. what he sort of thought things like Stranger Things as, you know, they're, they're so, they're just kind of shoving 80s down your throat in a way. I love that. I know, um, it's cool, but, <laughs> but I prefer it's to watch, not realistic. I prefer to watch 80s, from the period of 85 to 95 is kind of like my absolute sweet spot for fashion. So I prefer to actually watch films from that time where people were, I guess, encouraged to wear kind of more bright things. I think people trying to show the 80s like it was, it's different from what I see in the movies, but I did really like this aesthetic and there are a few little bits and pieces there that were like, oh, that makes me nostalgic for my youth. Yeah, it was more like kind of, I mean, Christchurch in the 80s, I was born in 1980, so yeah, it wasn't like, you know, high fashion, but um, I, this sort of clothing that I saw in Christchurch and in Bangkok was pretty similar to what I saw in this film. So I did think it was, you know, it was more like what the 80s really looked like. Speaking of fashion and accuracy, mm -hmm. um, Timothy Chalamet's Red Hair yeah. in the film, they actually used a dye from the oh, 80s, yes. not just like from that time, but like actually one that mm -hmm. they bought on eBay that hadn't been opened from the 80s. So. And it looks amazing. <laughs> I think it smelt bad or something, but mm. it worked, still did the job. It goes to show the chemicals to last a really, really yeah. long time. It was really unsettling for me watching this film though, because my youngest son is the spitting image. Is it spitting or splitting? I think spitting, it's spitting, yeah. Spitting He's image. the spitting image of Chalamet. It's freaky, especially from the side. My, the only real difference with my son and Chalamet is that my son's got kind of a square jaw and his eyes aren't quite so kind of droopy. But he even has the same haircut at the moment and they had nothing to do with the film. I think Chalamet has slightly darker hair though. Yes, yes, he does have slightly dark hair. But they've kind of got that pale skin a little bit freckly. Mm. So it was just really, every time I saw him from side on, I was like, is, is that my son? And I just watched my son acting in a, a short film that he was uh, put out for the end of year film course. And he was really, really good with actor. So I was like, go on, you should, you should get into acting. <laughs> you should be the New Zealand Chalamet. But he's like, oh, I'm too busy. Mm. You know, he, he is a very productive, busy, busy lad. And, you know, he plays drums in our band. So he's going to be pretty mm. ripped up with that. But, um, yeah, it's quite, it's quite crazy to see that similarity. It's like seeing your own kid up there. But the performances from Chalamet, who plays Lee, and Taylor Russell as Mary. Yeah. Oh, she's so amazing. Good. She's amazing. She's right? going to be quite a big actor, in my opinion. Oh, she's got to be. Yeah. She's got this quietness about her. Like, mm, it's almost like, you know, this understated kind of performance. It's yeah. just, but it's so, oh, it just gets She's, she's your skin. quite shy in real life as well I in think interviews. She is, yeah, yeah. But, um, but Lucas said, yeah, she, even though she's shy when she is acting, she kind mm. of goes all for it, you know. She has really interesting charisma. She seems like a very strong, self-possessed person, but there's a certain vulnerability there as well. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of presence you can't fake. She just has it. What was yeah. the film we watched that she was in? Waves. Yeah, so yeah. I watched Waves before we saw this because I wanted to see, you know, what else she'd done. And that was the film that Lucas said that he saw her and he's like, I need to have her in a He film. doesn't believe in auditions. So he saw her in that film and was yeah. kind of, you know, that was the, the thing that sold him. She was so good in that. Yeah. She she's a very very special actress, and you've also got Taylor Russ. Uh, sorry, uh, Mark Rylance as no, Sully. He steals the show. In my he opinion. does a bit. Like, yeah, he's he's really really good. And the whole time you're not quite sure if he's just like she kind of like a sweet old man, well a cannibal, but still a sweet old man that only like you know eats the dying or the dead, or is he actually like. A creepy incel man in disguise you just you just can't really tell he is a creepy presence but at the same time sometimes creepy and sweet can kind of overlap each other and it's hard mm. to tell yeah 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 definitely yeah. he's been acting like he's a theater actor mainly but he's been in films since at least the early 90s maybe the 80s as well and i want to see more of his stuff he's really yeah, interesting he's been in a lot of sort of period dramas and things like that which don't appeal to me as much but mm. more recently he seems to be um, doing these really memorable roles, like um, in Don't Look Up, that sort of comedy about the Isn't asteroid. It? Yeah, he played the like Elon Musk guy. That you know, the... he's totally unrecognizable. I know, like what he's they... what? he's one of these actors that, no. that like. Can Did he be... have fake teeth in or something for Sully? Yeah, I think so. Because they yeah, look yeah. so real, and he's kind of got the same yeah. red draw for a little. Bit. No, he doesn't. He doesn't look like himself in um, oh. Bones and All. He looks quite different. I mean, with wow, the hair, I'm the so braid surprised. and everything as well. I'm so surprised. I was so sure that that was kind of what he, he looked like, and that's why I got an Eno cast him. He carries this um, this bit of hair, like a braid. Like a, a it's braid a long of braid like of all lots of different hair. people's hair, and it's would it stink? Mm. But he he does it to like keep a 
a memory of all these people. That what do they eaten. call them? Trophies when the serial killer takes trophies. Mm. And I assume that all the, all the badges, badges and pins that he's wearing are, yeah. are from that as well. But the, I mean, the braids, are, I think they're all women's here. So maybe he has a proclivity towards eating female victims. Mm. It's quite funny maybe. because in Call Me By Your Name, which was Timothy's Timothy and Guadagnino kind of like blew up with that mm. film. The, the act, I find that movie really problematic because the actor that um, Chalamet ends up having a relationship with, to me, seems like he looks like he's in his freaking early 30s. Like, this is someone who's. I thought you were going to talk way, about the cannibalism. I was going to. No. I was coming to that. But I, 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 I think it's one of the most incredible films and I totally fell in love with it the whole time. I was really he's, uncomfortable with the power dynamic. I think he's supposed, to be, power dynamic, I think he's supposed to be like mid 20s maybe 26 or 7 yeah, at that, the most, and Chalamet is supposed to be like 17 or 18 or something. Yeah, but he's like this protected kid, he's a virgin, and he makes this much, much older, much more experienced, fully grown man, and they end up having this relationship, and the parents are fine with it, and I found that really hard to swallow, because if someone a lot older like that didn't care if it's a man or a woman, and was kind of hanging out with my child and developing a relationship, I would not be okay with that. He's a, no. I, know, I, he's a I know exactly what you're saying, but the, so. the, but the whole thing about that film is just how intelligent Chalamet's character is. I mean, he's still growing up and he's still a kid, but, but he he's very... But he still life experience. I know, oh, he doesn't. That's that's the other thing about that film. It's a, but, it's a really um, yeah. unhealthy power dynamic, and I think it is a predatory relationship, so I feel very well, uneasy well, about that film. Well, but that, no, no, I mean... No, Chalamet is very much like um, his character is, is very willing. Like it's not like he's being yeah, but, but chased by this boys guy. Are willing to be raped by the twenty. Well, he's not supposed to be a fourteen. I don't think. Yeah, but I don't know. Just to me, like I find it. I I can't love that film, and I can't. I love it. That film. I think it's great. No, because of just just that. It's it's very very uneasily with me. I mean, even if he's only like seventeen, is so freaking young. You have so little experience. I mean, you're horny, I guess, all the time. But that doesn't mean it's okay to get emotionally entangled with a much older person. And that's what he does. It's not just the sexual relationship, mm. it's the emotional relationship. So You'll definitely be in the minority, so I haven't heard anyone say that. But I that's do weird. I do understand what you mean. That's so weird that people don't no feel that way. That. Just because it's a beautiful film doesn't mean like it like, doesn't, yeah. But, but the, the thing was, so the, the other main character that Chalamet's character is involved with, he is a name by the name of Arnie Hammer. Hammer it? Hammer. Yeah, yes, yeah. Hammer. So he's been busted for um, wanting to eat people. So when this film came out, we both thought, well, I wonder if... More than that. I mean, he know. definitely raped multiple women as well. So Do they, is, are they actually going to have to prove that? Well, Jesus. He, it's currently been taken to court and everything, so we won't really know what the result of that Ooh. all is. But, but he's been <laughs> accused. He's definitely been accused. And... I just yeah. heard about the cannibal. At the thing. start, I mean, the whole thing was that he was a accused of wanting to eat someone and also trying to get a couple of his girlfriends to sign a clause where they would relinquish some of their ribs mm. for an LA surgeon to extract. So, I mean, it was, they were quite weird things. But... I guess he was like, if you're going to get them removed anyway, because some people do to make their waist smaller. He's like, I guess if you're gonna do it anyway, can I eat it? But that's that's still that's, well. No, that's it was not to, not because of that. He just wanted them to take it out for him. Yeah, that's yeah. But um, what the hell? <laughs> the, the weird, the really weird thing about this and bones and all is that after all this happened wow. and became public. That was when Luca announced that he was doing a film about cannibals. <laughs> so it was very <laughs> weird because he's a very close friend of Army Hammers. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, they're supposed to be doing a. Um, Documentary uh, about the Hammer family. Well, there's that, but no, I was going to say they're supposed to be doing a sequel to Call Me by Your Name um, called Find Me, I think, um, based on the book. And mm. Army Hammer will be a, like a his character will be a big part of that film. So. I, I don't know if he'll be in that film if he's in prison. I know, well, that's the thing. It's, Which is like fair enough. Yeah. If he is in prison, he sounds like a horrible human. We should totally check out that documentary. Yeah, you will. Because apparently it's his whole family. Like, it's, you know, it's a lineage mm. of... He's from a very humans. rich, like, oil in yeah, industrialist kind what. of family or something like that. I can only imagine. I think his granddad was supposed to be... Make Army Hammer even look quite safe. <laughs> it's saying something. I'm not surprised. Those, like, uber-wealthy families are very interesting. They can kind of... They've got infinite power, infinite money, so what do you do? A lot of them don't seem to give all their money away to, to good causes. They seem to indulge every pathetic fantasy they possibly can. And I'm not surprised that, yeah, a family like that produce such creatures. 
So I mm. saw something about Luca saying that this film, Bones and All, was about the ways in which society eats people. Mm. Um, and also okay. he, he's said that it's about desire and identity. And all mm, of his films yeah, are strongly I, about yeah, identity. Definitely. He, yeah. um, he's said that one of his favourite yeah. books is Bodies That Matter by Judith Butler, which is about identity, um, like gender identity really. Um, and that's quite a strong thing in this film as well. I mean, there's, there's that scene where he, Chalamet, they both need some food, and he goes um, and picks up this guy that he's going to smoke pot with, and he ends up sort of having sex with him. Well, he, he definitely, like, straight away, he's, like, luring him in with this sort of seductive thing, what can we do after this lane carnival is over? So, yeah, he's using his sexuality to seduce this guy. But this guy's like, doesn't really mm. need much seducing. I mean, he's clearly out for it. And there's a lot of talk as well in the film, like especially in that scene in the sort of field just after the mental hospital scene with uh, Chloe Savini. Who's actually good in this. She's she's not a very good actress. She, she really is. She's isn't. pretty average. Even her narration of the letter is, a bit, is a bit awkward. But I think she was definitely... The... She was good, but she didn't have to like open her mouth on screen. Yeah. And that, that's talk. a good point. Yeah, she she was the weakest link, I think, in mm. the entire thing. They could have had so many other actresses. But, you know. But they did have Jessica Harper from the original Suspiria mm. as the grandmother. And that was, that was awesome. Cool. And they had Michael Stolberg as Jake. I thought he's only in one scene uh, at night time they're drinking beers. And I thought he really... He really kept. I think he stole the show quite a bit too. He actually. also st stole the show in... Um... Call Me By Your Name as Chalamet's dad. Oh, what? He, he looks so different. Yeah, yeah, he does. What the He's thing? another one that can disappear into roles. What? I but I mean, that's, that scene in Call Me By Your Name is easily my favourite scene in a Luca Guadagnino film. The one at the end? Yeah. The, the I can't remember moment. the exact words, but he's sort of, he's just so kind and mm -hmm. it's beautiful. It's lovely. It's a lovely piece of dialogue and the performance of it is, oh. always makes me cry. It's yeah, lovely. It is a fantastic film about what it feels like. It captures that feeling of falling intensely in love and what mm. that's like, that sort of feverish yeah, yeah. craziness. Captures it so, so well. I cannot believe it's the same actor. Like, he's totally unrecognisable. But boy, is he good. He kind of reminds me a little bit of um, Buffalo Bill from Science of the Lambs, that character. Like, yeah, I really, I loved watching him and I want to watch him in more stuff because I really mm. enjoyed that. And also, well, they had David Gordon Green, who is a director... <laughs> Is this I kind hate of like, his films. Yeah, I don't think I... I don't really know any of them. Yes, you do. The Halloween films. Oh, right. That, that and guy, he's doing okay. The Exorcist remake. Oh, yeah, that's not... <laughs> I hate him. I hate his... Why would you uh, choose him? He's yeah. good at kind of rural dramas. I, I can't even remember the names of them, but like his first sort of handful of films were... They should you have gotten Luca to do good at what Exorcist. He did. And then he started doing comedies like... Um, the world's end. I mean, I can't even remember them, so just not things that I'm even vaguely interested in. But then he suddenly did these horror, you know, remakes of. Um, but the first one the was, was a lot of fun. The first one was. I thought that was good. okay. I'm not, but, but I'm not into slasher films. But I think even if you're not into slasher films and you look at it purely from a filmmaking perspective, he's not a very good director. He really but isn't. This is, will be the best thing that he's ever been involved in in his life, being acting acting in a Luca Guadagnino film for a few seconds. <laughs> and, and if you talk about identity, he's quite an interesting character because he's not a cannibal. Mm. He, well, he's a cannibal by choice rather than he's born that way because yeah. these cannibals are clearly, it's a genetic thing. You're born one. You, and But there are people out there that are kind of like cannibal groupies and they will join in. The eating. Yeah, I mean, what I was going to say too. Is so it's about identity as there's well. There's that scene after the mental hospital where they're sort of arguing out in the, the field and what Lee and Marin. Yeah, and yeah. Chalamet's sort of character says, you know, you can either k kill people or you can sort of struggle to live without doing that. No, or, he said, you or can, you can kill yourself. You can kill yourself, you three lock options. yourself up, like because of her uh, other yeah, head, yeah. or yeah, like live that way. Just find a way to live yeah. with it. So they're str sort of struggling mm. to find their, their own identity throughout the film. Um, and and Marin is not keen to just randomly eat any old person. She gets very upset when she finds out that someone they ate mm. in her family. She has a lot more moral sort of compass. She's an ethical cannibal. Than, um, no. Yeah. Though like, I keep thinking there's a line. So the line, uh, the, the name of the film is from a line talking about when, you know, there's before and after when you eat like a whole body. Yes, it's like totally makes your whole world different. And they talk about eating bones and all. And I was like, 
how would you eat like a skull? Like really? Mm. How could you eat an entire person? Well, These people aren't like icons. I, like I said to you last night, is that man that Werner Herzog says is my favorite man, mm. um, the guy that ate an entire plane. It's yeah, I guess so. It's... You know, you can it can be done. But imagine trying to like pass uh, like a rib a rib bone or a, you know what are those ones you got on your spine like a spinal right. column thing. I mean, just trying to imagine that go through your digestive system. Mm. I don't know, maybe these cannibals have a different kind of digestive system, but I don't think so. And I did really like that about them because they're not kind of like, they're not powerful, they're not like, you know, there's, they're their own kind of creature, but there is a genetic link to the, these sort of creatures. And but they're, but they're otherwise just normal humans. And I mean, plenty of humans eat people and do horrible things that aren't cannibals. So it is just kind of in their nature. Mm. It's a very intriguing concept and i like i've never seen a cannibal film done like this i don't think i've ever seen one like do, done again like this i just think it was really good yeah and i like that was. they weren't just sort of bloodthirsty like eat everybody yeah. so yeah i mean you know there's a lot more to it than that and i mean um, eating. And, you know some animals are predators and some animals are prey and it's kind of like that it reminds me a little bit a little bit in terms of their relationship and like and romance to movies like maybe natural born killers which are two very unusual characters that find themselves and go on this big yeah, kind of yeah. adventure together across America, which is what happens in Bones and all. And I, it was one of the few romances that, like, Natural Born Killers, I really enjoyed. It, it wasn't... It was really heartfelt and sweet and moving. It also made realistic. me think a little bit, tiny little bit, the cannibal part of a, a Ravenous, which is a, a cannibal film I love. I love My that film. Cannibal. That was such a good cool. film, actually. And there are little moments of humour that we were laughing quite a lot in the theatre, which made me think, geez, how people think we're not... Oh, well, there was only like two or three other people. There wasn't too many people there. But, um, yeah, then it was the opening night. But um, I did think there was a lot of humour, but it was very subtle... And mm. I really, 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 really enjoyed the humour in there. And of course, it's very serious as well. I love hearing people react to things in the theatre. So I encourage, you know, I like lots of noise. There was just this, the kind of <laughs> com comedy in it was so interesting. Like Sully's obviously had a munch on this old lady. Mm. And um, he sort of leans over to get his bag and a chunk of flesh falls out of his mouth. And it's sitting there on the couch. And he just looks at it and he's like, meh. Mm. I don't know. I just, I just found that so funny. Just these... The ways, the little ways that people behave, they're like, they look at their, oh, can't be bothered getting that, you know. And it's there's lots of little of details in Lucas films, and there's lots of references mm -hmm. to other films. Um, mm -hmm. Mirren's character, um, I saw the film for the second time with my dad, and he hated her haircut. She has this very high sort of um, short, short high bangs. It's quite unusual, yeah. And that is based on Stacey Hoopka character in um, Science of the Lambs. He's a very minor character. Very minor character, yeah. but but Luca is a huge Jonathan Demme fan, mm -hmm. as am I, and he mm -hmm. even wrote his um, film, like his university thesis on Jonathan Demme, so like mm -hmm. he's someone that he thinks about a lot. Jonathan Demme and Bernardo Bertolucci are his two big, big influences who he always talks about. She, I wonder if because of the fringe, that's why her eyebrows. See, if Luca's really into like things being period specific, Lee's eyebrows. I mean, sorry, uh, Marin's eyebrows are very twenty twenty. They are not eighties eyebrows. I'm sure that they thought about that because Luca's a big fashion. They are not. Luca's a big eyebrows. fashion guy as um, well. No one had eyebrows like that in the eighties. He's nope. like he does a lot of nope. um, ads, nope. fashion ads for like huge fashion houses, and, and you know they're not eighties eyebrows. Hell no, but I'm wondering if because she had such a short fringe, they kind of had to do that with her eyebrows because I'm sure not everyone's so eyebrows were exactly no the same. No one had eyebrows like uh, that, it, it's a very fashionable way of doing your eyebrows that she's got in the film. They're very specifically groomed and cut, and they're very now. I'm sorry to say, but I'm on Luca's side. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to hear from Luca himself. Like, yeah. can you show me? The eyebrows that you based her eyebrows on because I don't believe anyone had eyebrows like that in the 80s and I think that they are way too modern and in fashion right now to be period accurate. That's the only complaint I had. Otherwise, I was completely... That was the only thing that brought me out of the experience. Mm. I was like, those eyebrows. No, no, no. I was just going to say too <laughs> that youth is a huge thing, part of um, Luca's filmography. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. He doesn't have any children himself but I think that he he makes these friendships with sort of young actors and he mm. kind of apparently almost treats them like his children mm. sort of you know introducing them to books and music and things like that um, yeah. 
So that's kind of what you're like with my kids. You're like, here's this book, here's this movie. I mean, I've been doing that. I can't that. help it. <laughs> I've been doing that. It was just so nice that they've got the both of us to do that now. Because, mm. you, you know, I'm only one person, but with you, my God, you've spent so much of your life accumulating knowledge and books and films and music. So mm. it's like really expanded everything I can do. But yeah, oh, I, I, I really love the relationships he has with his younger actors. I think that's yeah. really wholesome and lovely. And it'd be such an amazing person to have someone like him in your life growing up. Yeah, yeah. So amazing. I mean, that's part of the reason why I love seeing a new film of his, because I know mm. that I'm going to feel like I'm spending a couple of hours yeah. with him, with, yeah, with yeah. his books and music yeah. and stuff. It's, it does feel that yeah. way. It's very personal. It's very intimate. I've made a playlist up of all of the songs from all of his films, and there are a lot of songs that he chooses. You know, he's mm. he's one of these... There were two Joy Division and one New mm. Order songs in this one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And good ones, too. Not your, not your, just your average, like, what do you expect? It wasn't like it was... I really liked how it wasn't, like, you know, the most obvious 80s music of the time. It was the more no. interesting choices from the time. There's some that I didn't like. I mean, there are always some that I don't mm. like, but I le I've left them off the playlist. Like, there's a Kiss song with Chalamet da prancing around the room to it, which is quite hilarious, yeah, it is but hilarious. I really don't like Kiss. And it's yeah. probably a lot to do with their personalities, how sort of misogynistic and Republican they've yeah. become over the years. Maybe yeah, that's right. They've always been like that, I don't know. Mm. Um, but the other thing, talking about music, is the really beautiful score by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. They're a killer combo, those two. I think they're, yeah. I think they're working on Luca's next film, which has already been shot. And I think it's called Challenges, and he said that it's a comedy <laughs> about the world of tennis, which sounds like a weird choice, but tennis is but, a crazy world. So. But I've but he's sort of announced things in the past, and when you actually see them, they always kind of look like Luca, and mm -hmm. it's. I think it'll be hard for him to just do a comedy. I'm sure it'll be more of a dramedy with lots of other sort of. He's into coming of age things, and this mm -hmm. is going to be a coming of age film as well um i but, could definitely handle him doing a comedy i think his sense mm. of humor is pretty similar to my own yeah yeah same yeah <laughs> yeah pretty dry I, I really liked a bigger splash which was kind of funny that was the first one that i introduced hannah to um, the one with tilda swinton um and she's kind oh, of saying i don't like that one so much sorry it's it's being re-released just at the moment actually um it, is an even bigger splash is what it's called and it's like a an extended version oh. i think it's like a four hour cut or okay. something so well, that might be better I, i'm more than happy to give that a go i actually really want to see the extended cut of bones and all because there are a few kind of dream sequence um bits that mm. I, I heard actually were little excerpts from shots that they filmed but they didn't use because it's just over two hour film yeah. but i really really want to see those bits i want to see like the full um director's cut because it does, yeah, it's a, it's a long film, but especially on the second viewing, like it just went like that. Like Hopefully he'll do that. I mean... Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross said that they saw a, the original really long version of the film and mm. that they had such a big response to that mm. that um, they've almost kind of said that making this film was kind of the best experience they've had making yeah. a film and they were so emotional even when they were talking about it in interviews they kept getting goosebumps just yeah. remembering that first screening and i i could tell by the way luca was talking about them that he you know had a great experience too and was a big fan of their music so it sounds like they'll probably be doing scores mutual in the future. admiration and i mean the last score that he had done for him was by Tom York, so he can kind of work with anyone he wants to work with, really. Mm. Um, but... Yes, I'm glad to see him having so much success. I don't know how much of a box of his success Bones and All was. It wasn't. It, was... it really wasn't. Oh, damn it! But, but you know, like, mm. <laughs> damn it, the right damn it, people damn it. like it. <laughs> yeah, it's been very well received critically, so that's a good thing. Well, a lot of people... Do... I've read a lot of reviews where people didn't like it, but, but mm. you know, like... Weird. I think. What, what more do you want, critics? Yeah. Really? Like, come on. Who cares, really? Well, they said shit things just... about Kubrick and Ridley Scott and stuff. So critics honestly don't really fucking know what they're talking about. Yeah, I, I don't really read critic um, reviews much. I I prefer to read the reviews on IMDb, but written by you know just normal people. 
that are... Yeah, but some people, normal viewers. people are complete... Like, I know, some of them are hilarious. Like, but some of them are dingus as though, like, reading the <laughs> Memoria reviews, for example, because that's an amazing mm. film, but the people are like, one, what is this terrible waste of time? There are always like, some really okay, tragic fine. reviews. Just, just don't have any, like, patience. Or imagination okay. but yeah i don't know i hope i do feel like this film was kind of destined for cult status easily I don't know. Mm. kind of already is cult like to me I think. yeah yeah Def definitely mm. um, I, I was just remembering that luca has referred to gardening as the most helpful act uh, when preparing a film because it's all about patience oh, I can't and you, stand have to, you have to be so patient when making the film yeah. um, I, so I, I find that really interesting I love planting things I love harvesting things but the part in between I absolutely can't stand I hate the remembering to water I hate all the weeding I just hate it I don't mind pruning pruning's okay but yeah I'm not a very patient person I just want mm. all the weeds to be gone otherwise I'm not interested one thing that I found really refreshing in Bones and All too was all the interiors of quite low income housing that you see, yeah, which felt so different yeah, to yeah. Um, yeah. lots of Hollywood productions. Mm -hmm. You usually, that, yeah. usually really don't um, see inside houses like, like that. It was fascinating to see sort of the battered walls that mm. places really look like that they were run mm. down and well used. Reminded me of a lot of flats that I've lived in, actually. Oh. Mm. Oh, I've always been quite fussy about my flats. Even if I'm broke, I still manage to find quite nice flats. Yeah. Stop so the, the the cinematography as well, I really mm -hmm. really love his his um, very exciting use of things like swish pans and the editing was very very creative as well. Um, lots of choices that you just don't see in any other films. Mm -hmm. I mean, he t he takes some of those but things from Jonathan Demi as well. As well, like it's very. It's gorgeous, but it's subtle. It's not one of those like, wow, look at that shot. It's more just like, wow, this he's, is so He's usually lovely. not as subtle as Bones and All, actually. Like he, oh, that's he, right. He, yeah, that's he true. He said that he yeah. purposely tried to make a more, what did he say, like austere kind of film. Yeah, but it's still very, very Minimal warm. Yeah, yeah, it is. Very, I actually think it works well in this film because I, I appreciate the kind of crazy stuff that he does with editing and cinematography but this was very pared back in that respect but it still just looked gorgeous it's a very emotional film i wasn't expecting to be quite so affected i, I knew it would be because uh, i i'd been reading a lot about it and knew that it was sort of a love you know a romance he said that's mainly a romance with a bit of cannibalism <laughs> but it's yeah. i knew that it was going to be there, sort it's, of a, tear, a tear joker i wasn't expecting how um, sad it was going to be it's a little bit of a spoiler like um this i'm not gonna spoilers. i'm not gonna spoil it completely but yeah like um i was not prepared for how upset i was in a certain scene and i kept thinking about that certain scene like for weeks afterwards i just couldn't shake it, it it's so rare for a film to really be able to get to me like that. Um, there was a sort of mixture of like pleasure and joy and ecstasy and terrible sadness and pain and agony kind of all mixed up together. Communicated so well without words or even sound because there's a song playing over the top of it. And I was just like, oh. like, yeah, no, that, I, I was emotionally devastated by this film. Mm. So if you have seen it, there you go. You, let us know you probably were as well i would be surprised if you weren't because it wasn't emotionally manipulative in the way that other films no. are it was just it actually just captured that feeling and it just it haunted me he it really haunted me he always treats the audience like you're intelligent beings mm -hmm. and most american films don't um in my opinion i mean this was his first film set in america wow. um his next one is set in america too so that's it really just cool. looks so gorgeous. Like mm. even he just makes the most ugly, mundane dirt parking lots look beautiful in a way. I loved mm. the um, the like you were saying the eighties fashion, and uh, like I'm, I <laughs> find a lot of those hair metal bands quite funny. And there's a character wearing a Dokken t-shirt, who are like a hair metal band, who I always found really funny. And there's a cool, really cool Cindy Lauper shirt worn yeah, by his, his that, yeah. sister, yeah. His, his character's sister. Oh, it's really interesting. There's these little moments, like, you'll only see these characters interacting very briefly, but somehow they become these much bigger presences. Uh, the sister is saying to Lee, she's like, oh, you look like a faggot in that shirt. Mm. And when he comes in from after this fight, it's such a horrible thing to say. He takes off the shirt, which I actually love that shirt. I think it is 
gorgeous and he looked amazing in it but when he comes in he sits down and he takes off the jacket and i just thought that just says so much mm. about even though he seems like someone who's kind of really bulletproof about how vulnerable and self-conscious maybe he it's really a very is. realistic choice to make yeah just little things like that tell like like hours worth of story and writing mm. it's so well done yeah. i just i was mm, i'm just i'm just so so impressed yeah with guadalino's magic and power and ability one thing that i only noticed on the second time through watching it was that there's a real sort of cobalt blue and amber palette mm -hmm. sort of like almost like well it's sort of different shades of blue really blue Sun and sort of sense. yellowy orange um but yeah sort of all the way through the film the fashion and the the especially the production design Mm. Um, which was really really cool. I, I yes, also, there's really warm tones in there, like lots of sort of golds. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was quite cool. Um, the intro bit with the paintings and the score. Mm. Like I always really look forward to um, to Luca's um, intros. They're always beautiful. The "Call Me by Your Name" one's really really cool. You can hear that's just vibrating and annoying it. I hate it when people call. I don't want to answer this phone. Just text me. Text me. Mm. I hate phone calls. Who doesn't? Who does like you know, extroverts? Maybe? Do you have anything else to say? I actually don't. I think I've pretty much exhausted my mm. material on this matter. So have I. Yeah, you know, I've gushed a lot, but mm. it's so deserving of the gushing, I reckon. So I guess it's time to rate it. Oh, yeah. What? You go first. Um, well, you know. I loved this film, so I'm going to give it a, a 9 out of 10. Um, I mean, so it was like nearly perfect, but I'd only give something 10 if it was just perfect. But yeah, <laughs> a 9, a 9. So you're giving it like 4.5 hearts out of 5? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yep. I'd say the same. It's almost completely perfect. I'm tempted to give it 5 out of 5, but I'm going to give it 4.5 out of 5 because I'm trying to be a little bit more stingy with my... Reviews. It's so funny if you look through my like IMBD ratings, it's like nine, ten, one, two, and like a couple in the middle. Like it's just I'm quite. When I love a film, I love it. When I hate a film, I hate it. And if it's if it's meh, it's meh. You know. So. Why why do we do five parts again? Why don't do, Why don't we just do ten? Because then we have. We do five yeah. each, and then we add oh, up together. Right. Okay. That's why. We've only done nine months. <laughs> but yes, so we're giving it nine hearts out of ten in our confined. We give it basically the same. We both give it nine out of ten. Yeah. And that's, that's really good. And so glad this film got made. Mm. So glad. So, so, so glad. Um, it was very delightful. So happy solstice or Christmas or whatever you're happy into. Happy Satan's Day. Happy Satan's Day, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. We're not really big on Christmas, but it is the one day of the year we can guarantee to eat two meals in one day. Mm. Two good meals in one day. So I really like that. And actually I'm looking forward to seeing my parents this year and catching up with the kids tomorrow night to watch the menu. I kind of like started this sort of family thing where I like to 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 watch a movie on Christmas Eve and do the presents and go out for some food then like and that just with the kids and Nick now and it's kind of like this nice thing we saw Parasite a few years ago which was the best Christmas Eve movie ever I highly recommend that so we might even review the menu if we, we might, love yeah. it or hate it I don't think it's going to be as good as I was hoping I'm hoping I've heard it's really really dark and fucked up I've heard so I've like, heard too many comparisons to Knives Out which I really don't I really like mean, I don't like I've the even humor seen that. That. so it just sounds like not my cup of tea that funnily enough was the other movie of choice that was out when we went to see Parasite yeah. and I was like no no we're watching Parasite and man my kids and me we've just the humor in Parasite is very our kind of humor mm, so I love that film it's so good I mean that I don't think you should watch like cheesy like Christmas movies you mm. should watch something that's kind of dark and messed up and has some sort of like impact so you'll remember it we're gonna watch one called Deadly Games which is a French horror from the late 80s um, which is seen as a precursor to Home Alone but with a way more horrific sort of spin, with a maniacal Santa Claus um, chasing this kid. <laughs> I think there was this one called Rare Exports or Rare Imports that I quite liked as well. It's like um, Krampus is actually a demon that comes out of a mountain and he has all these like naked owl old men. They cause us elves and they're like running around creating havoc. And it's really, it's, my kids were way too scared when I watched it when they were younger, but mm. I really enjoy that. It's quite demented. I can't remember if it's Norwegian. It's a very cold country. But that one's actually, if you're going to watch a Christmas movie, that one's pretty good. And we might be seeing um, some Silent Night, Deadly Nights yeah. as well after the menu. Lucky. 
maybe you can go along a little private screening with our mm. friends but yeah i hope you'll have so by the time this is uploaded it'll probably be like christmas eve and well it's new zealand at least so yeah hope you'll have a great christmas and have food to eat and presents if you're lucky mm. and let us know if you've seen bones and all and if you liked it yeah do. let us know your favorite christmas movie too hopefully it's something we haven't seen or heard of and maybe we'll check it out so till next time bye bye this damn thing every time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>